Okay, so I bet everybody's anxious to get started building some projects here. So let's do that. We've prepared quite a bit and we're ready to go. So when we start up Autoplay Media Studio, we're presented with this screen. and It gives us a variety of options. Uh, you can create a new project, open an existing project, restore the last open project, or exit the program. If your last open project is missing from where it used to be, or if you've never had one, this will be grayed out. Okay, so let's go to create a new project. Here we're presented with the built-in template gallery. This is where we're going to start in this lesson. You can actually create your own templates and share them online, download them from our site, etc. But for now, we'll just look at the built-in ones. So for the project name, I'm just going to leave it as my project. That's good enough for the purpose of this demo. You can name it anything you want, though. Um, in this case, we're going to take the virtual business card template. As you can see, we've included a wide variety of templates, professional quality stuff that you can just click and go with. But let's go to the virtual business card one, click on the thumbnail, make sure that the text down here says business card template, and then click on create project now. As you can see here, and actually let's just all go to the same workspace together again to make sure we're on the same page. So we'll go to view, workspace layouts, compact, and we'll be able to make sure that we're all looking at the same thing at the same time. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got a four-page template. It's already built. The buttons are built in. They've got the actions attached to go from page to page. And basically, it's ready to go. All you have to do is change the information and publish. So let's just take a quick look at the pages. We've got the page tab area down here. And you can move freely back and forth between the four pages by clicking on them. So there's the portfolio page, photo page, and contact page. In the case of the photo page, you're going to want to replace this photo of our fictitious salesman, Ted Sellers, with your own. So if you click on it and press delete, that picture is gone. And you can just bring in your own JPEG or whatever and drop it right on there. In this case, the screen image is actually its own separate image too, as you can see here. And you can remove that if you'd like to put your own screen on. So let's go ahead and customize this information at the top. I double clicked on the name and phone number at the top of the page. As you can see here, it says Ted Sellers. And I'm just going to switch that. Okay, so I'm going to leave the phone number intact. It's just for the purpose of this demo. I'm going to switch the text to say your name. Okay? And if you go to a different page, you'll see that it's not switched. So in this particular case, since we've not centralize this and we'll look at that later. You can use page inheritance to centralize these things but since we haven't here we're just going to copy and paste this. So I will go to another page and double click that object and then paste in the text and I will go back to each page and there's only four pages so it's pretty quick and I'm just double clicking the object so I'll double click this and then I'm just pasting the text into the object text field here. In each case, I've customized this to our own text. And if you go from page to page, you'll see it's the same on each page now. OK, so it's pretty simple. You're just typing in your text, basically. If we go to the contact page and customize this information, we can double click on this paragraph object on the right hand side. I'll move this so you can see what I'm talking about. And we can put in our own name. and telephone number here and I'm going to press OK and you'll see here we've customized this information here so if I double click it again you'll see we can come back put our own email for example and our own address if we like I'm just going to leave it at that and we'll move on to another page here the photo we've already discussed portfolio page has a paragraph object that has a scroll bar on it. So let's take a quick look at that. If we double click it, we get this dialog here, the paragraph properties dialog. That's because it's a paragraph object. And we can take a look at the text that's in here. Now, you can see there's a scroll bar feature to the side here. And it's got a style pull down, and it's got settings for vertical and horizontal.
So the horizontal scroll bars are turned off here and the vertical are set to auto. What that means is anytime you put more text in here than is the length of the paragraph object, in other words whenever the length of the text exceeds the height of the paragraph object it will automatically insert a scroll bar. In the case of Autoplay Media Studio 5.0 you can actually create your own scroll bars now or select from a variety that we've included here. We've got the Euro scroll bar on this because it's sort of sleek and elegant and attractive so we'll stick with that. Okay so we could actually change that and put whatever text we like in here but we'll leave that for now. The introduction page same thing you could just double click this and put your own text in there. Now we're just going to quickly preview this don't worry about this for now. We're going to explain how to preview and publish in an upcoming lesson. But for now, we're just going to show you that indeed, when we publish this project as is, you'll see our name is up here with the phone number now. And as we surf from page to page within the template, the changes that we've made are part of the project. So, for example, in the contact page, our information is part of it. And it's ready to go, basically. You could publish this project as it is to a uh, CD-ROM or the internet or a, like a standalone executable file any way you like. Um, there's a lot of options here in the new Autoplay Media Studio to publish to a wide variety of formats as you can see here to an ISO image, to a compressed executable, so on and so forth. We'll touch on that stuff later but for now we've basically covered what we wanted to cover here which was how to start a project from a new template and quickly customize it. So if you guys uh, want to get started doing this, the best way to do it is to fool around with the templates that are built in and just start a few projects and take a look. There's no harm done in just starting something up and uh, taking a look at what it does. It just takes a few minutes. So if we start a new one here, just for the purpose of review, we press the new project, file new, and we're presented with this screen. We type in a name here. We select a template from within the template gallery here. Let's take the music player for example this time. And then we click the Create Project Now button. And we're presented with the new template as a project. Okay, so we should all be confident now starting projects from templates. Let's move on to the next lesson.